I'm at the Cliff House in San Francisco, and I don't know if you've heard, but it seems like a lot of people are catching perch lately. So that's what I'm going for today. Uh, I've got a very simple rig. It's just one of those pre-made rigs that you can buy in packs of 10. This is a 20 pound test pack. Got a five ounce weight at the bottom because it's pretty high tide right now and I need that weight to stay out there. I've got two size two hooks above that weight. And the reason why I'm using size two hooks is because I'm going for perch. And perch mouths, if you know anything about them, are a lot smaller than bass or a lot of other different types of fish. So they need a small hook to be able to hook them. So let's see how I do. So I'm using live shrimp that I bought from Sunset Super. It's the same price as the previously frozen shrimp, but it does such a better job. Sutro Baths is a great place to bring your family or friends. There's a million places to explore and the people are always friendly. Hi. Hi. For those of you who aren't San Francisco natives, like yours truly, you probably don't know that this is the Cliff House. Just below it is Sutro Baths, built in the early 1900s by Adolf Sutro. And the interesting thing about Sutro Baths is that at the time it was the world's largest ocean-fed saltwater swimming pool. And if you look closely, you can see different areas, different pools where people used to swim. And just over here is where the pools would naturally be filled at high tide. So I just reeled in my last cast and look what I got. This beautiful perch. See that blue pattern on it? Isn't that nice? What kind of perch is this guys? Is this a rubber lip? And so I've been fishing for about four hours now and I'm getting hungry. All I had was some donuts this morning. And you know, I don't want to go back home to cook these guys, so I'm just going to build a fire right here. So I'm about to scale these fish and gut them. So if you don't want to see something like that, then I suggest you tune out. It's going to happen right now. Make sure you do a nice job because it's not fun to eat scales. All right, so the next thing you got to do after you scale it is to gut it. And to gut it, you cut all the way up to the gills. So the fish is dead already, but you can see that its heart is still beating. Now, if you were in a survival situation, you wouldn't let any of this fish go to waste. You would eat the liver, you would eat the heart. So if this was a survival situation, then I would eat this heart.
All right, now that you got your fish uh, opened up, to clean out the inside, you basically just pull out all the innards. And what I like to do is to just grab all of the gills, get as close to the mouth as possible, and just rip those straight out. And with your knife, there's a little air sac inside. You can just scrape that out. And that's basically it. That's a really nice, clean fish. I'm gonna do the same thing with the two other fish. All right, so now all the fish are gutted and scaled, and now they just need to be rinsed off and cleaned. So when you're going to make a fire, the most important thing is to be organized. You slowly build up to bigger sticks, to bigger sticks, eventually to the biggest sticks. Thank you.